Prince Sado's life wasn't one of opulence and grandeur typical of royalty. Instead, it was marked by a haunting descent into madness. But before we get into the heart-wrenching details, let's set the stage. Prince Sado, born into the esteemed Joseon dynasty, was set to inherit a kingdom. Throughout this episode, we'll explore the complexities of Sado's life, his troubled relationships, the harrowing accounts of violence towards eunuchs and women, and the inexplicable killings that marked his troubled reign. Welcome to Asia Obscura. Please like, share, and subscribe for more Asian stories. Alright, let's dig into the early life of Prince Sadu. Born into the esteemed Joseon dynasty, Sadu's relationship with his father, King Yongju, was anything but nurturing. Yongju had a temper that could flare up in a snap, and Sadu lived in perpetual fear of his dad. Imagine that, fearing the one who should be your guiding light. It's heartbreaking. But things weren't peachy with his mom either. She was more concerned about following the king's rules than nurturing a loving relationship with her son. So Sado grew up longing for affection from his parents, but sadly that was in short supply. Now he tied the knot with Lady Hijung at a tender age, hoping for some stability. You think being married would bring some solace, right? Initially, yeah, but then something shifted. Sadu fell ill, and things took a turn. His behavior got erratic, he was grappling with anxiety, and moments of consciousness slipped away. The deaths of King Yongjo's adoptive mother and his wife, Queen Jongseong, within a month of each other deeply impacted the prince. This grief wasn't just internal, nope, it got outward really fast. He started taking it out on his eunuchs. Like seriously, taking it out. That was this one time he walks into his room carrying a eunuch's severed head, making everyone in the room, including his wife, take a good look. He'd be beating up palace staff left and right. Reports also detail assaults, rapes, and brutalities inflicted upon the ladies in waiting. It became a horror show behind the palace walls. Sado had this crazy phobia about clothes, like getting dressed became a whole circus. He need a mountain of outfits, burn some as some kind of ritual, and if anything went wrong, people got hurt, even killed. But the relationship side wasn't any better. He had this thing with Park Bing Ah, which was considered incestuous due to her previous role as a lady in waiting to his grandmother. The king went berserk, of course, and Sado, in a fit of despair, tries to drown himself. Then his birthday in 1760 was like a total meltdown. He went off on his own mother and his kids, threats, tantrums, the whole package. But things hit rock bottom in 1761. He flies into a rage while getting dressed and beats Park bing -ah, the lady who'd had several of his kids to death. And the chilling part? He comes back like nothing happened, showing no remorse. Now here's where things take an even darker turn. In the scorching summer of 1762, things hit a boiling point for Prince Sadu. An ugly showdown with a court official sent him into a rage. He threatened to kill the official's son and made a terrifying attempt to breach the upper palace. But here's the kicker. Rumors spread like wildfire that Sadu wasn't just on a rampage, he was out to kill his own father. So what did King Yongjo do? Well, Sadu was commanded to crawl into this wooden rice chest, not much bigger than 4 feet square. It was a sweltering July day when he was led to this grim contraption. Lady Haijong, his wife, recalls in her memoirs how Sado pleaded for his life but eventually complied, though he tried to escape once he was inside. For seven days and nights, Sado was trapped in there, his anguished cries echoing from within. On the eighth day, they opened the chest and it was too late, he was gone. Strangely enough, Later on, King Yongjo restored Sado to his position as a crown prince. He even gave him the posthumous title Sado, a name that speaks volumes, meaning thinking of with great sorrow. Sado's legacy isn't just a tale of madness, it's a profound exploration of mental health within the confines of power. Was Sado truly afflicted by mental illness? Or were his actions a product of unchecked power and the suffocating constraints of royal life? 
Histories and scholars grapple with these questions, delving into the annals of history for answers. But we'd like to hear from you. What do you think of Prince Sadhu's story? Please comment below. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Asia Obscura. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you have your own stories to share or topic you'd like us to explore, feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, stay curious, stay passionate and stay tuned.